Hi everyone, trust you all are doing well and welcome back to another lesson. Now this one we're going to do is we're going to redirect our users based on their type if admins to their own dashboard and users to their own dashboard. Now in our case we actually wouldn't need to do that but I thought I have to put it in here for people that might want to because in the same dashboard what we can do is you can just restrict certain aspects of the navigation for different users all right but i thought let's do uh, its own login response for people that actually want to build an application where they actually want to add more meat for the uh, admins compared to the users all right so i just wanted to put that out there we can actually use the same dashboard but in our case we just don't want to do that we want to redirect them to their own and yes so it will be extra work for us but some of your applications you need to do that as the information will be quite a lot different and it just separates the two concerns into their own little compartments all right enough of that so where did i get my references for this i'll be honest we all do a little bit of redump. I didn't know how to do this when Laravel 8 came out. And yes, there's two references I want to show you. So let's go to our browser. All right. The first one uh, is Laravel News. How to overwrite the login redirects in Jetstream or Fortify. So I will link this in the description for you. And obviously you can read more about them right there. And the other one is Tall Stack Tips. So where you can do Laravel 8 conditional login redirect as well so i'll link the two in the description and obviously you can go and read up more about it all right just to kind of solidify the information all right so what we're going to do now is in our http right here all right we're going to create a new folder right here and we're going to create a folder named responses right there all right so the next thing you're going to do inside that you're going to create a new method or like, like this login response all right a new file called login response php file we're just going to call it login response all right so then we got our login response right here now the thing about this is we need to extend that laravel contracts the laravel fortify contracts that actually handles the login response all right so we're just going to create our php tags all right as you guys remember we don't need a closing one anymore all right so namespace and app http and obviously we want to reference the responses folder like here okay so we got our namespace all sorted out all right so now php knows where this is and what it's all about all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to use the lord laravel fortify the contracts and obviously the login response as you can see it comes out there and then we can just call it something different because we're going to use uh, the we're going to create a class actually locking the response and we don't want them to confuse with each other. All right, and we're just going to call this contracts login response. Okay, so now that's done. Now we create our own class called login response. All right, this is going to implement. Okay, so this is going to implement that contracts response that we just created right now. This one right here. All right, so it's going to implement that. Let me just copy, paste it in here. So it's going to implement that. And inside this, we're going to create a public function. All right, and that is going to call be to response. And then we're obviously going to do the request pass the request in there now the thing is now we need to have a conditional layer 
So basically it's checking if the user, so the auth, so if the authenticate user, now we're going to call on that method inside our user model called admin. All right, if you guys remember that. All right, so if the authenticated user is admin, we want to redirect them to the owner. So basically we, now we can say, okay, return, redirect. Okay, we want to redirect to a route. We haven't created the route yet, but the route we're going to call it admin dot index okay so obviously that route is not created yet but we want to re redirect that user there okay and or if the user is a normal is if that let's say this fails uh, let me put it like this if it passes do this if not then do this return i don't want to confuse you guys so redirect now as intended all right intended now convict now this will be the fortify dot um, right here now you might wonder where that is let's go there all right so in our convict file right here you go to fortify you will see we got we have our home right here so fortify home it goes to our route service provider and it's going to look for the home right there and inside the home right here it's going to go to slash dashboard or if you have a different name to for the different for the other normal users you'll put it in here because then the users will be redirected there all right so in our login response so if the user is an admin please take them to this route if they're not then move them to this route and that fortify home right there just redirects them to the dashboard as you can see for route service provider right there calling home which is this one right here in our providers route service provider and constant public home right here to that right there okay so all good stuff so let me close it up there so now we created our login response now the next thing that we need to do, we need to know, let Fortify know, please make use of this login response. Otherwise, it is just a folder file that we created. And yes, and it's not being used right now. All right. So how do we do that? We go to our app right here. Then we're going to go to our providers. Now inside here, we will have our Fortify service provider right here. Now in our, you will see, yes, kind of a lot of things for Fortify that they have, all right, under the boot method and rate limiter and all that kind of lucky stuff. Right, now the thing is, what we want to do in our register method right here, what we want to do is we want to bind that lock-in response contract, okay, so that when the app starts up or when Fortify services starts up, the service provider, it can actually know that we referencing a locking response right here. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to say this dot amp, and then we want to bind. Okay, so let's do that. Just put a semicolon in there, and obviously just give us a locking response. Now, the thing is, what we want to do is we want to bring in that contracts again. Okay, so the locking response contracts for Fortify right here. And I just want to call it as um, locking response contract. The thing, because I don't, because we're going to call in the locking response as well, and we don't want to confuse the two. All right, so let's just locking response contract class and obviously the other one is the login response the one that we created login response All right as you can see the login response a app HTTP responses class 
and you must obviously make sure you import it at the top so let's see if it imported as you can see here it is let me just bring it down to this one so that we can see it all right so there's our login response right there and this is obviously the contract all right so then we bind them all right so the next time fortify works up works up or works or get in service or whatever you want to call it and yes then it actually will start up with our login response and yes so now it will know about the login response it created all right so that's basically how we do it now like i said if you want to read more about it you can just go to the sources i will link it in the description to the laravel news and the tall stack tips so if you go here you can obviously go and read more about them right here now you can see in the boot method right there they got it in here okay and in our register if you have a two-factor authentication and this one as well so this is basically that so most of the information i got it from here all right so that i will be able to just do it and inside the boot method they obviously use the app singleton and the lock lock and response but what we have done is we just gone going going via the bind method in the register right here obviously you can put it in the boot method like they've shown you right there all right so yes that's it for us thank you guys for watching if you like the video please give it a like if you don't like the video give it a dislike and if you have any other comments or feedbacks regarding this and i would love to hear it and yes thank you guys and i'll see you in the next one goodbye